the 12 rules to live by on testosterone. Rule number three, the history and physical exam. We're getting up to number one. It's getting more and more relevant and more important. The aspects of what I do as we go up to the number one rule to live on you're on testosterone. So today is going to be really great because I'm just going to rip right through this because I do this every day. This is the H&P. This is the history and physical exam. Any physician does this, any healthcare provider does this, and this is the basis for helping someone, the basis for understanding in a focused medium what's going on with that patient and the basis of starting, helping someone. So let's go. Here's how it's done. And this is actually a model that every physician learns in med school and residency training. It starts off, it has to be very organized. So it starts off with a chief complaint. <clears throat> what I want you to guys to do here is, I want you to understand the medium here. And when you're working with a healthcare provider, unfortunately, the problem is time. If you have a great healthcare provider in front of you, so I want you guys to write this down. Follow this, sketch this out, Work with me on the app. The Anabolic Doc app is there and growing. It's a men's health revolution. You can get everything you need to know on there. You could even have access to me and my medical information with the Zoom meetings. So it starts off with the chief complaint. The chief complaint is number one. It's got to be focused. It's got to be something that you tell that healthcare provider, they're going to ask you, What's your chief complaint? Because in so many instances, someone comes in and they have just so much going on. So you have to be organized. So what's that chief complaint? What is it in one or two sentences? For me, it's going to be men that are suffering from anabolic steroids, their heart, something's wrong, or maybe their erections are not good, or they're concerned for their health, or they have mood issues, gynecomastia, Right, all these issues. So again, this is the chief complaint. Very specific, what is your chief complaint? Write it down. Next, we flesh out the chief complaint with a, a, a description and it's more subjective now. This is called the history of present illness. History of present illness, the HPI. That's where you flesh out the chief complaint. How long has it started? What happened? What makes it worse? How much of you drugs have you been on? Are you on testosterone? Are you blasting and cruising? What are your concerns? What can make it better or worse? Again, this is where you describe to the healthcare provider exactly what's going on and what are your concerns. And this is where it's more description and more subjective than the healthcare provider. And you have to discuss the history. Okay, so everything is based in looking back now at the chief complaint in the history of present illness. I do it every day, guys. Now we go into the standard history. And everything you do on the standard history is going to look back relating to the chief complaint in the history of present illness. You see that? And this takes years to get good at as a healthcare provider. You have to look at this. You have to be super focused. Now, the next move is going to be your past medical history. What medical problems do you have? Blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, psychiatric, mood disorders. And then with the medical history and surgical, medical and surgical history, what medicines are you on? <clears throat> it goes together. Sometimes people don't know what medical problems they have and they go, you go through what, what medicines are you on? And of course supplements. And of course, the steroids and all the pets. This is what I do. I do this stuff every day for you guys. Now, and if someone says, in the end, <clears throat> I'm on albuterol. Oh, they have asthma. Oh, I forgot to tell you asthma. You see? So when you vet the medical history with the medicines, they come together. Okay. 
And you'll have, and when you go through this whole thing, there's mopping up with the review systems you'll see. There's always mopping up. When you're talking to someone, I spend an hour and a half for every man. Every patient, and back in the day when I took care of women as a primary care doctor, I spent an hour and a half, sometimes more. The first intake H&P is crucial to build the relationship and the rapport and to develop who is this person, this patient, from a medical perspective. Next, after the past medical history, psychosocial history. This is crucial, this information. You guys have to understand this model and how to do this. This is what doctors are going to do, but they have no time. So you have to help them do it. And they just don't check off boxes. This is about you. This is going to be really, really personalized. Like I say, fingerprints, fingerprint medicine, psychosocial history. Who are you? What do you do for a living? Are you married? Do you have children? Where do you live? What's the environment? Are you in the mountains? Are you by the sea? What do you do for a living? Who are you? This is where it comes out with the environmental, the occupational. You start to see, you, this is how I remember my patients. You know, I can't really remember sometimes all the names in the beginning. You know, a, a, a Jim Jones or a Tom Smith. So in the end, when I'm going back and looking at my charts, I always go to the psychosocial history. Oh, I remember this guy, Jim. He's a marketing guy and he markets beer. We took a guy in a few weeks ago. He's a huge marketing guy just for specialized beer companies. I remembered him. That's crazy, you see? So psychosocial history. Who are you? What do you do? This is where I also ask about the overlap with the psychiatric history, with depression, with anxiety. This is where it's so crucial. You can do it in the medical history. You could do it in the psychosocial. So psychosocial history. Again, listen to this. This is where you ask, do you smoke? Do you do drugs? Have you done drugs? Do you drink? This is the whole, the sexual aspects. Again, it's going to be hit here in the medical history. Do you have erectile dysfunction? You see the medicines, we're on Viagra, you're on Muse, maybe you're on the injections, maybe testosterone, right? You see that? Testosterone replacement. All the stuff is overlapping. It's integrated. Medical history, psychosocial history. Okay. So I think that covers so far things pretty well. Let's, let's review it. Chief complaint, very specific. Why are you here? History of present illness. Describe what happened. When did it start? What makes it better or worse? What's your history of the steroids or how long you've been on blasting and cruising? What is your issue with your erections, okay? With your sex, with your heart. Then you go into the past medical history. Well, here's where all the medicines are mine. Here, here's my medicine. When you do this with young people, typically they don't have much. When you do it with middle-aged and older people, you get a lot. People get older. Things happen. So, past medical history, psychosocial history, and that's where we are right now. Psychosocial history. We're finished with that. The medicines, of course. Again, I did the medicines. Allergies. You have to ask about do you have any known drug allergies? You have to get this in because if a healthcare provider is going to give you something, if you have an allergy or if you have a reaction to something, you have to tell them this. Again, you'll be amazed when you go to these clinics because you're going to have to use these walk-in clinics now. If you have a great doctor out there, that's great. You're going to have to organize that doctor with this information. Allergies. Do you have any known drug allergies or reactions? I've I've done Viagra, doctor, and I don't like it. It makes me flush, affects my vision. I have to have Cialis, or vice versa. My antibiotics, I've used this, I have a reaction, I have a penicillin allergy, all these allergies, right? Maybe you have no allergies. NKDA, no known drug allergy. We write it down. Next, this is crucial, the family history. This is what I call the crystal ball. This is the cardiac stuff right here. You're on androgens. You're a 42 year old man. You loved steroids and testosterone. Maybe you want to just be on testosterone now. Do you have family history for coronary artery disease? Come on, right here. I pick this up every day. This is like taking candy from a little baby's palm. I can't believe it's not done because they're too busy out there in the clinics and you don't have a unified healthcare provider. You don't have that one doctor just like this. So you have to do it. Family history. Always start off with a mama. 
What's your mom's medical history? Blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, cancers, colon cancer. Does she have that? Stomach cancer. Heart disease. Does she have heart disease? It's usually unlikely when I take a history of a man who's 20 to 45 that the mom's fine. The dad. The dad may have existing bypass, heart attacks, or stents. It's uncanny when you look at the history of people and the first person in the family lineage to have a cardiovascular event is the dad. It's uncanny. Doctors, unfortunately, used to do this, but now you have a walk-in clinic. And if you have a great doctor, you hold on to that doctor. Family history. Now you're on the dad. Blood pressure, cholesterol, stents, heart attacks, strokes, bypass surgery. And if your dad hasn't had these things checked, make sure that he gets this and he sees this video and he gets this done because he's older than you or your mom. <clears throat> Family history. We look at the mom and dad. We look at the sisters and brothers. I'm looking, if it's a man on androgens, for the cardiac stuff, the low-hanging fruit. You grab the fruits first. Heart attacks, strokes, hypercoagulable states. Then I go into the, the, the red blood cell stuff, right? You can see that video. Hereditary hemochromatosis, polycythemia vera, the blood clot stuff. I'm telling you guys, it's out there. And if you have it, it's found right here on the family history. Okay. And of course, the, your children, you know, rare diseases. When you hear hooves outside, you, you look out the window, you're going to see horses, not zebras. Go for the horses first. Common things are common. The cardiac disease the early cancers, the preventable cancers like colon cancer. And if you understand when to get a colonoscopy, it's going to save your life. Okay, let's review again. Chief complaint, history of present illness, past medical history, psychosocial history, medicines, allergies, family history. Last but not least, the mopping up. Did you miss anything? Review of systems. Now you take the review of systems focused upon the chief complaint. And you ask, again, is there anything that makes it worse, that makes it better? I review a systems from head to toe. Psychiatric disease, again, you hit it again. When you hit these things over and over, you will be amazed that the redundancy helps. Physicians and nurses, healthcare practitioners, we're always asking, it's annoying, we're asking the same thing over and over and over because you're going to miss something and redundancy protects. Talk to the pharmacy guys in the hospital, they're going to tell you that. Again, review of systems. What happened, how long, what makes it better and worse. Cardiac, chest pain, nausea, vomiting, take it from head to toe down. Any problems with your urinary tract symptoms, lower urinary tract symptoms, bowel movement problems, skin, rashes. See, review, focused review of systems upon what your chief complaint and history of present illness is. That's the history, you're done. That's all history is. It takes time. It takes time. Next, vital signs, because this is the history and physical. Next, we move into the vital signs. Now, in the virtual world, I have you guys do it. You go to an outside clinic. What I'm providing in this world, it's, in my opinion, a revolution. You have a physician digitally, like me, experienced healthcare provider, for 20 years, internal medicine, focused on men and antigens. You know your information, your history and physical exam. You watch all the videos. You get your labs. You bring it together. You get vital signs outside facility. You bring it together right here. And the educated consumer never supplant a great healthcare provider, but they're not there. So you have to work with them. I promise you, a good healthcare provider is not going to mind when you're super focused, because I focused you right here with all this information. Vital signs, you're going to go out and get those. Height and weight. Of course, we have temperature, O2 saturations, but I'm going to be more focused. This is more cardiac focused, because if you're a man, if you're my average bear, you're a man, you're on androgens, we have to go for the money is. Cardiovascular, of course, and the prostate, lower urinary tract and the sexual. You see? 
This is the money right here. Height and weight, heart rate and blood pressure, respiratory rate. This is key. Heart rate and blood pressure. This is key. These are the these are, are, are the the main aspects, the, the crucial vital signs of life. Keeping your heart rate. So if you're if you're in bad shape and your heart's tacking away in the 90s to over a hundred, something's wrong. Your heart rate shouldn't be that high. But what are you sick? What's going on? I mean, if you're, if you're acutely ill, you have to understand this is not going to be a, a relevant for, uh, for testosterone or for the long-term look at your generalized health because you're acutely ill. But they do the same thing when you're acutely ill. The H&P is the same. This, no one's deviating from this. Nobody. <clears throat> Heart rate and blood pressure, I'm telling you, are key. This is your focus, and with my app and my services digitally, you'll be able to understand exactly with diet and exercise and behavior changes to manage it, what the exact numbers are, and then of course, focused medicines that you will need based on evidence-based conservative medical data. But it's gotta be fingerprint driven for you. Blood pressure and heart rate, vital signs most important here. Next, we move to the physical exam. Again, you need to get the best healthcare provider that you could find that's experienced. You can see all the other aspects of the labs now that I've provided you. You can see the studies, what studies, the echocardiogram, the coronary artery calcium score. This is the physical exam. It's focused, in my opinion, for this, for you, looking at the heart and the prostate lower urinary tract symptom in the testicles. You start off, of course, but I want to give it, be thorough for you guys, head to toe. Head, eyes, ears, nose, and mouth the physician, the healthcare provider, and a very good healthcare provider who's a nurse practitioner is adequate if they're experienced. They know what to do. The lungs, listen to your lungs, listen to the, to the patient's lungs. Heart sounds, this is key. Do you have, are you in sinus rhythm? Is it a regular sinus rhythm? Again, what is the heart rate? Is it regular? Any murmurs, regurgitation or gallops. This is gonna be imperative to listen to the heart, feel the pulse. Of course, we have the studies, the ECG and the echo and all. Understand guys, this is how you put all the stuff together. Next, you move down. The abdomen, they listen to the abdomen with the stethoscope, they feel the abdomen. You know, again, we have CT scans and MRIs now, it's crazy, ultrasounds, but this is the old school stuff. Then you go from the abdomen, you go, of course, and you have the back exam and all these things. And there's neurologic exams. I'm not talking about the neurologic exam here. General internal medicine here, focusing on heart and the lower urinary tract symptoms. So we move down now from the heart and the lungs and the abdomen into the pelvis, the testicles. The data shows that men should check their testicles themselves. Self-exams are actually better than a physician or healthcare provider doing it necessarily than that. You're not seeing them that often, so check your testicles. But the healthcare provider should check your testicles adequately for a testicular mass or for any other problems that you're having with your testicles, especially if you're on androgens, right? They're gonna be affected. Prostate exam, digital rectal examination by a healthcare provider that does this. A lot of doctors now don't do it in healthcare providers. They don't feel comfortable doing it. You don't have to put your finger in someone's rear end. So, but again, this is relevant for checking the prostate and even checking for, for rectal cancer. This is so important, guys. I can't tell you how some of this stuff is so uncomfortable, but it's so real to do. Women have to have these things done. This is not for women. This is just focused for men. Then um, after the, the focused pelvic exam for a man with the penis, the testicles, and the prostate, you move down to the ankles. And I think right now, it's, as a physician, look at is our ankle edema, how are the pulses? Common sense, again, it's all related to the cardiac. cardiac. If you're a man on androgens or testosterone and you have early heart failure or frank heart failure or any cardiac disease, and you're, or you're on so much androgen, you're overloaded with fluid, you're gonna have ankle edema. You guys know this. Well, a caregiver needs to understand that. What is the ankle edema? Is it dependent? 
Is it bilateral? What's the nature? Is it one plus, two plus? You see, you need to understand this, and you can go to it. You can put all this stuff together for yourself. The last is going to be, of course, looking at the skin, because you can get, you can have someone, who, you have, I get skin exams. I micromanage my own health care with my providers. For, for the digital rectal exam, I do urology. For the heart, cardiology. For the skin, dermatology. If you get this done, teeth, dentist. If you get this done, if you, if you micromanage it, like I'm showing you guys how to do it, with the grace of God, you're going to live a long, great quality of life. Skin lesions for melanomas, basal cell, squamous cell. Maybe you have acne because you're on androgens. And then, of course, we have the gynecomastia. So that's, for me, it's part of the skin exam, right? Well, you could do it when you're up in the chest cavity, too. So gynecomastia, you want to have someone check that. That's a healthcare provider that really knows this could be a good breast surgeon, plastic surgeon, just a very good healthcare provider can do that. Whew. After this... We're going to have the analysis and plan. That's going to be next week. We're moving up to number one. Thank you so much, guys, for bearing with me with this one. This is a big one. This is the history and physical. Let me have your comments, please. Let me have the comments. Do physicians do this? Have you really had a detailed, appropriate, expert history and physical? Have you had this done? Because this is what it is. It's on one piece of paper. I really hope this helps so many men in the world spread this information and stay strong and healthy for as long as possible. Thank you so much, gentlemen.